everyone. I am Dr. Kaushal Kumar Bhagat from Center for Education and Technology at IIT Kharagpur. And today with me, uh, Dr. Bani Bhattacharya and Dr. Samal Kumar Das Mandal. This is an introductory video for the guideline which we are developing and uh, uh, what kind of components or videos will be there we are going to discuss. Uh, Dr. Bhattacharya, uh, you are in this e-learning area I think almost uh, 30 years yeah. and uh, uh, as we know that now the digital penetration, mobile penetration, internet penetration is very high not only in the developed countries but also in the developing countries, resources are available. So, uh, what do you think that why e-learning is very important in this 21st century? Uh, see, in the um, 21st century, due to the advent of different kinds of new technologies, mm. e-learning uh, actually utilizes mm. these technologies and it allows increase of access of education. So, it is now available to students all over the world. So, this is one of the things e-learning uh, does which face-to-face uh, -face education could not do. It also increases the number of students that can uh, um, take part in the learning programs or can be covered by any learning program. So, um, the scalability of any learning uh, course or learning program increases manifold. So, this is these are the two uh, other uh, areas of… Uh, that means, I can say that flexibility and scalability are the major two advantages. Two major, fle flexibility, scalability, accessibility, in uh, any time, anywhere learning for yes. the students. Yes. So, these are main advantages, advantages of e-learning. E uh, there are many e-contents are available. Uh, how do you think that we can improve the quality of these e-contents? E-content usually uh, when it started out, when e-learning started out, it was basically just uploading some text or video or um, graphics on the web. But today we are uh, able to go much beyond that. So e-learning today is not just uploading any material, it also has to have a very clear structure because the student is not in front of the teacher in face to face situation. So the structure has to be so that you sort of uh, guess what the students requirements or questions would be. Therefore, structure is very important. Also, building in interactivity, uh, building in any kinds of graphics, animation, video, uh, tests, assessment, all of this can be, has to be included in e-learning. Mm -hmm. So, to build a e-learning mm -hmm. which includes all of this, we require very clear guidelines how to develop the content of e-learning. Mm -hmm. Content of e-learning cannot be just uploading any kind of material. Yeah. It needs to follow all of these, include all of these structure mm -hmm. and all of these uh, um, uh, facilities that technology gives us today. Yes, and I would like to add another point is that suppose uh, what, what is happening at present is that we are focusing too much on technology and uh, giving less uh, focus on the content which is uh, important concern. Right. Right. So, so uh, means uh, there should be a balance between technology and content so that uh, it will be more effective in nature, more enjoyable and at the end what we want that the learner should have the skills what we want to deliver through this. Right. Research. So, technology should be used as a tool. tool. So, right. it should be uh, uh, selection of technology in e-learning should be such that it enhances the learning efficiency and effectiveness. It should not be used just for the use, uh, sake of using a technology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, if we remember that e technology is a tool, mm -hmm. remembering that uh, we develop the content of the e-learning using technology as and when, uh, wherever it is required, yes. then only the e-learning content will be appropriate, will be effective. So, uh, Dr. Das, how do you think means uh, a good structure will help the developers uh, to develop e-content which will be much more effective in nature? and uh, will help the learner to learn the content easily. Actually, that uh, if you see that uh, content wise, mm -hmm. then uh, if you see the most many contents are available right now, if yes. you search in Google many contents mm -hmm. will come. Mm -hmm. And <coughs> historically though all those contents are uh, uh, created sequentially, yeah. if you see that all books are sequential. And when as a teacher, so when I created uh, uh, content, I also think about the sequential. Mm -hmm. But the learners all are not sequential mm -hmm. and also the how much content I should read for what purpose mm -hmm. that is not mentioned at all. Mm -hmm. Means if suppose that uh, if I give an example, 
suppose I read a topics, mm -hmm. how much I should read, mm -hmm. how much, what kind of uh, reading is required, what, what, what is looking for this content. Mm -hmm. So, that is why that uh, what we say is suggest that can we make a structure like that, mm -hmm. where we initially target that for this purpose this content is used, means goal mm -hmm. or target has mm -hmm. to be defined mm -hmm. initially, mm -hmm. that this is the goal for this content. Mm -hmm. Once you define the goal, mm -hmm. now the content is required some structures, mm -hmm. the structures means okay, this content targeted to this goal mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. and then see any anyhow if, if that assignment mm -hmm. is not included in the content, mm -hmm. then so the learning effectiveness of the learning is goes down. Mm -hmm. Now, many you can see that many contents are there in at, at end of the content there is assignment. Mm -hmm. But there is a no connection between the assignment and what we targeted for that content. It is not matching our objective. Objective, or you can say the outcome, outcome of that content. Yeah. So, what are basically what we are proposing in e-content development instead of sequential content development with lot of animation, lot of graphics, we are saying initially spell out the target of the content in an outcome manner, mm -hmm. and then you supply the content, mm -hmm. and then you provide a assessment mm -hmm. test item yeah. which will test whether the learner has achieved the target which is assigned or not. Yes. So, if you see that the, this content guideline will provide you a structure for the recontent development not yeah. only the content side, yeah. but also the target side mm -hmm. and assignment side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, that is why I am saying that it is different from the present content development scenario. Mm -hmm. Some sort of you can say that target is given, mm -hmm. you may say single content is developed by you, mm -hmm. the system will provide a adaptiveness also mm -hmm. that somebody said no instead of this content, this content is better than better. to achieve this target. Yeah. So, later on you can add the content. Mm -hmm. so, so, some student may say this content is good, yeah. some learner may say this content is good, some learner may say this content is good. Mm -hmm. So, you can say that instead of selecting the students adapt student learning style learning approaches i am saying i am providing the content in different kind of things student should select student should select it which is best so, for which them. is best for them yeah. but they have selected the content for reaching the target yes. not for reading the content okay i have read it yeah. not like that yeah. so that's why this structure is very important for developing the e content in any field yeah. even if from school level to college level to any learning any training also. Even you for the industrial training. In industrial also. training. Yes. So, there is a target that you have to know this this is your outcome that whatever you learn does not mm -hmm. matter, mm -hmm. but you have to do this. Mm -hmm. So, that things has to be first defined, mm -hmm. then you do, do the content, mm -hmm. then you prove the problem, link with that things. Mm -hmm. So, that is the our goal for this e content development guideline. Yes, I think guideline this guideline is going to cover uh, mainly four important themes. First, is the structure how you are going to have a good structure for your e-content. Second, it will involve the design elements or principles which the developer should follow to develop their content. Third part will be the technologies because nowadays there are many good technologies, interactive technologies are available like augmented reality, virtual reality, ST5 ML, uh, even for the animation also how you can integrate those technologies to teach some of the concepts which are very abstract in nature and you can visualize those abstract concepts using these kind of technologies by integrating those with the e-content. Uh, and that and at the end we are also going to talk about the open educational resources uh, which are available for the developers they can use those resources to develop their e content also very important topic we will cover as uh, copyright because it is very important that are you going for your uh, ccy by sa uh, that uh, the copyright license you are providing and if you are using some other people's content are you giving the credit or not that is very important. So, basically we are uh, these uh, follow up uh, videos will cover these four themes and we will meet you in next videos. Thank you very much.